communications at Korak Telecom and the head of uh, Special Investment Committee uh, who recently uh, uh, led uh, the uh, investment uh, of TipTop. Welcome, Tag Mazen. Thank you, Tara Khan. Uh, so we are here today to discuss an important topic, which is uh, the power of number and uh, its impact in uh, making trends. Uh, let's start by your recent campaigns at Correct Telecom that uh, made a fuss, let's say, and they were quite successful. Uh, especially the one with your brand ambassador, uh, Ms. Rahma Riyad, which uh, was the fourth in the top ten uh, music chart. Please tell us more and tell us what was the secret behind this successful uh, achievement. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction and uh, uh, for bringing up those uh, recent campaigns that uh, Kodak Telecom team has done. Uh, first of all, I want to thank some of the team members who've worked on it who are in the audience today uh, because it was really their efforts that uh, made it as successful. Uh, now in this digital age that we're living in, the amount of content that people are exposed to is astronomical per day. Uh, is just swiping through different content every day uh, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Snapchat, and the other platforms uh, as well. So today, to really make something a trend is truly um, an achievement. And we're very proud of the uh, communication team for doing that. Uh, one of the things is diversity. Uh, that is key in this world because whether we like it or we don't, uh, globalization has taken effect, has taken full effect. And today, uh, youth in the country are exposed to content from all over the globe. Uh, it's not just content from the city, content from the country. It's from all over the globe. So you, you have to ensure that you get a, a diversity of opinions in the matter before you go out with it. Uh, and you cater to the likes and the needs of the people. Now, we, we made a music video, it was an advertising, and we, we were expecting it to become a trend, but we were never expecting it to become number four on the charts worldwide. Uh, uh, Selena Gomez and Coldplay were above us, and uh, that's, that's quite an achievement that a team locally here did that, in, and the song in Arabic and Kurdish was uh, competing with Selena Gomez and Coldplay at the time. And there's other campaigns, and this comes, again, in a digital age, you have to take the opinions of everyone. So within the team, we really sit uh, in the meeting room and everybody gives their opinion. Uh, we make sure that we choose the one that the majority wanted, because that is the way to cater to the needs of the majority, where it becomes uh, a trend. Uh, now, it is not really a hard science, but at the end of the day, it's a science of numbers. Uh, you have to see what are people following you and you have that number, you have that data, it's, uh, it's the era of big data and you have to get the data to see what people are following, what is trending and you have to go with the flow, you have to ride the trend and before, 10 years ago on social media, um, a trend used to stay for two weeks, before social media a trend used to be a trend for a couple of months. Today it's maximum 72 hours, so you have to be quick. And that speed is also key in being able to, to really ride the, the flow of the trend at the time. Thank you. Uh, Kag Mazen, you brought up a good point, which is uh, the amount of content that people get exposed to in today's uh, like internet. So. Uh, what is the role of storytelling in getting your data or your content exposed to the people? As, so, you know, storytelling is very important because we humans uh, for centuries, for hundreds of years, we've always liked to, uh, we've enjoyed telling a good story and uh, good stories remain. Uh, you know, back in the day, uh, there, there is a... Um, there is a story about Achilles, the, the Greek hero in uh, the Trojan War. His mother tells him, if you uh, go to war, you are going to die. You will never see your child again. But for as long as humans have voices to sing with, they will sing the song about you. 
but if you stay at home, you'll see your son grow up old. Uh, in fact, Achilles did go for the glory, did go for the war, for the story. And in fact, today at all institutions, the Iliad of Homer, which is about Troy and Achilles is the main character, is still being read across all different universities in the world. So stories have that power of evoking the emotion in us, and that's very important. Uh, and today you can really, uh, just as I, my previous point about trends, you can make those stories with the data that you have to attract the attention of as many people as possible. Okay, that's good. Uh, Kagmazen, let's now talk more about your recent uh, activity as investment and the 5 million investment that you invested in TikTok. So this is a big number and uh, we want to dig into that as well. Uh, what is the message behind this investment that you made beyond the financial benefit, of course, any investor and startup would make? I'm sure there is another message that you conveyed through this investment. Um, so, you know, it was a number that even shocked us, the team who actually made the decision. Like, uh, uh, we were not believing it and something of, you know, a startup in, in the Kurdistan region and in Iraq in general, raising $5 million in the seed round was something unheard of. Uh, and, and I think uh, what, what we did, well, first of all, I ended up really uh, getting more phone calls than ever before for different matters to discuss uh, on the startup industry. But the, the message here is that the youth of this country can make it. Um, and today the median age in, in Iraq is 21, which means half of your population is younger than 21. So it, it is a population, you know, 38 million people, then uh, if we do the math, then it's about uh, 18, 17 million people who are under 21 years of age, and that's a huge number. Uh, so these are the people, this is a generation that have grown up with iPads and iPhones in their hands, and these are the tech-savvy people. Uh, and and it, is, it is very important uh, that we support the youth for these startup projects, because if we really sit back, a company like Cora uh, directly you know, employing uh, three, 4,000 people indirectly the employment of Quora goes to 30, 40,000 people in the country, but at the end of the day, that's 40,000 people out of 38 million people. So uh, corporations can do so much, government can do so much. If we don't create more opportunities for youth to be employed, to own their own businesses, then uh, there is really no way to, to satisfy this newer generation. Uh, and the brain drain that, to a certain extent, we're already seeing will, will get even more. So, our message really is that we are supporting the startup industry in the country. We are supporting the youth and us as a corporation, yes, we might have reached our limit of employment, but we will make sure that we create opportunities that will create further jobs for the population and will also allow uh, the youth of the country to come up with their own ideas. Uh, at the end of the day, when you look at the stories of, uh, you know, of Apple, it started in a garage. Uh, so, uh, when you look at those stories, and you know, Korak for us, startups are very near and dear to our hearts because Korak essentially started as a startup. Mm -hmm. uh, now a lot of people see the fancy buildings, the, the number of employees and uh, all of that, but today what people don't understand is how it started. And uh, in fact, we've made a documentary about that, it's on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it. Uh, about, uh, we've named it the story of struggle because it indeed has started uh, during a time that was truly struggling for any business to start, let alone a telecom company. Indeed. Uh, Kagmazen, indeed this uh, step as Korag was very important to initiate CBC in Iraq and uh, it drew attention of World Bank and also the Central Bank of Iraq. Can you tell us more about this and uh, explain to us uh, what is the next step uh, of these investments? Uh, yes, indeed. You know, uh, there was a delegation from the World Bank that came here and uh, they requested to see us as Quark Telecom not once but twice within the three, four days they were here. And uh, really the thing that made, it, uh, made that very important for them was the investment in uh, TipTop. Uh, because, you know, our investment in TipTop, it means for all the youth, for all the startups out there that were... Uh, not really having access to that much big funds because they were small. Mm. 
now that there is potential, there is companies that, that will invest. So uh, f for them, really, they wanted to push on the government, the central government and the regional government in the Kurdistan region, uh, to, to make regulation easier for the youth to start it. And they wanted us to lead the consortium uh, that was going to do that. And uh, we're still in touch with them. Uh, and we're working every day to make sure that we make it easier and better and more convenient. Uh, now, easier, uh, I hope nobody understands the word easier as uh, I have to do nothing, I have to sit and I'm going to become a business owner. No, you have to work really hard. But what we need to make easy is the red tape, the processes that kill so much time. Uh, registration of a company, to, to this day, uh, the current uh, cabinet of government is taking steps, but still there is nothing concrete. Uh, taxation issues, uh, you know, to this day, taxation is not very visible uh, to the youth, to how much you make, you know, it's, you still have to check. So, it's these things that we're trying to work on uh, with the central bank, with the World Bank. Um, but I think we, we did a uh, good thing, we uh, put the five million because we did uh, make a lot of noise, not locally but internationally as well. That was definitely a good noise. Uh, Takmazan, uh, since TipTop got the chance to get this uh, big number of investments, what are the chances of other startups or how can they get the same opportunity? Uh, what could be the positive points that they can have that draw attention of investors and what could be a no-no for investors uh, to invest in the startup? Uh, that, that's a great question and uh, to be honest, if, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we're a for-profit business and uh, if there is no business case, then that is a no-no uh, from the beginning. So there, it, it has to be scalable. The business has to be able to grow. The, I have to see the numbers for me to be convinced uh, as an investor. Um, but, you know, I've given a couple of other talks and uh, I've always said it's the passion of the people. Because if it's really a business case, then nobody better than the university professors can make a business case. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's the idea, then, you know, uh, I can take my creative team that worked on those campaigns that became a trend to lock them up in a room and tell them, think about a business idea. But it's the people, uh, because, you know, there is no thing set in stone. There is nothing you can say, this is a business plan, I'm going to move on it. Because there is a business plan based on today's world. Um, and, and we've seen that in our lifetime, uh, especially the people of our country. You know, the business case you had to in 2013 was completely invalid in 2014, because there was a war in the country. The business case that people had in 2019, me being one of them, was completely invalid in 2020 because it was all of a sudden a different world. The way people communicated, the way people interacted, the way businesses operated, all of that was different completely. So we look for the people, for the people with the, with the drive, with the passion, with the vision to actually move forward because that business plan will change. Um, and if you're someone you've put all of your cards on that business uh, plan, then tomorrow when the world changes, your business plan is going to be invalid. And uh, I need someone who can take the decision right there and then that, no, I have to adapt the business plan to today's world. So it's, it's very important for me to see the passion. Now, for startups, really, and uh, this is a clear message to everybody. If you're really trying just to open a business and make money, um, it's not right for you. But if you truly enjoy what you're doing and you believe in what you're doing, then it is the right thing for you and then you're going to make money out of it. Because then, you know, if you yourself don't believe in something, how can you convince me to believe in it? Uh, so it, that part is very important to see the passion and the drive and to see that they have knowledge of their surrounding, of the environment that they are operating in. Thank you for your talk. I personally thank you because as a startup, First of all, I know the audience are hearing too, but as a startup owner, I really benefited from that and I will consider it. Uh, you brought up a good point. So it's about the personal persons that you invest in. You invest in people. And another thing is that the characteristics of those people that you invest in, they have to adapt. 
beyond that, what are the ideas that are most likely to be invested in? Um, so, so to be honest, you know, uh, today anything tech-based is very hot uh, because that's where the world's going. You know, a hundred years ago, people were protesting all over the world, saying, you know, this uh, factories and this industrial move uh, is going to kill our jobs. Today, we're saying, no, we need those factories with that machinery to create jobs because these tech and automation uh, uh, technologies are killing the jobs. And I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe, uh, you know, I believe that there will always be jobs for people to do. Now, today, if you see, you know, it's quite interesting. Now, you meet some young people and they will tell you we are uh, interior designers. If you call them to come design your house, they wouldn't have a clue how to do it because they're interior designers on the metaverse. And believe me, there are such companies out there They were interior designers on the metaverse. So the metaverse, yes, it came. Maybe it killed some physical jobs, but the amount of other jobs that it has created, the need for these people who can actually build you a house in the metaverse. These are no longer people with muscles who can carry uh, construction material, but these are people with coding abilities who can actually build you the house that you want. So. Uh, it's, it's very important to go to, into that sector. And the other thing is scalability. Again, uh, you have to show me that, okay, there are some ideas that are great, uh, but to what extent can it be expanded? If, it, if you bring me an idea that will only work for the center of uh, Hawler, then it's not an idea that I'm going to invest in because it's the center of Hawler only. But if you bring me an idea that today, yes, it's the center of Hawler, tomorrow it's the suburbs of Hawler, and then um, you know, in, in a year's time, you're already in the other cities and the other smaller towns, then yes, I will, I will agree with it. And uh, that is something that attracts us very much, that scalability uh, to see it. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so you have this experience of investing in Tip Top and it happened here in front of us. Uh, but we are unaware of what it takes from the government side. So how was the process? Uh, of investing from the legal part or uh, the government part? So the answer I'm supposed to give is to satisfy the government and say they are doing a great job. The truth of the matter is not that, uh, unfortunately. I, I mentioned a bit uh, taxation is, is still a very big issue because it's not really clear cut. Um, the, the other problem registering a company is I've done it myself and it's a painful process. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I've, I've had access to many lawyers, business lawyers, who would work on the case. Now, a young person who's having a startup, maybe they have $10,000. They don't really have access to go get uh, the most well-connected lawyer in the country to run, speed up the process. So the, the government to this point, um, I'm seeing you know, on different panels, you know, their, their presence here actually at Hitex uh, is testimony to that, that they are trying to fix it. But to this day, there is nothing really that you can touch, that, uh, that you can feel, uh, that they have done. And so far, it's a lot of, the, you know, there's a lot of conversation going on in the government, which is a very good thing, and I encourage and I hope it continues. But I hope very quickly and very soon it will, it will materialize and it will actually um, be translated into real laws and real processes that will make it uh, much easier for youth especially. Um, you know, in, in fact, I believe that it's time for government to really even inject funds uh, into startups, into startups uh, that will, and they, they can, you know, the government knows better than I do, but uh, they can have their own criteria for what kind of companies. Is it companies that create jobs? Is this com company, uh, companies that will take the load off of the government for employment, for employing these new graduates from universities? And there's another thing that government can really work on is the education system. Uh, because, you know, today, unfortunately, there's a lot of people with a lot of degrees that I have interviewed, but not a lot of real knowledge. Uh, so this is an issue that we're having at the educational institutions. Um, now, there is institutions that are coming up different universities in, in the three cities across KRI, but uh, it's not enough. One university per city is not enough. Uh, the fundamentals of the system have to be changed. Uh, and I think it's now time for us really to think 
about putting coding, about putting tech-related studies um, even into high school uh, so that they are better prepared for more advanced courses at the university level uh, because that's what we need. And, I, and I've always said this, that if you make something with your hands, a craft, it's beautiful. But the borders of where you can sell it is very limited. And especially us being a landlocked region, it's very hard. And now the most important thing really, if you, we focus on software and on technology, then borders are no longer a problem because the internet doesn't know borders. Um, you put it out online and you get paid for it. So a company could be, I don't know, uh, sitting in Soran, for example, and they could be working with companies in Australia. Uh, so that's why we really need to focus on making the region a tech hub. So, Tagmas, and you brought up some uh, good points here. First of all, I didn't realize that you actually initiated to improve the investment process from the government side, which is great for startup owners to know this. I'm sure uh, they are as happy as I am to hear uh, that point. Uh, another point is that, uh, again, tech is becoming the trend for investment. And uh, besides that there is a hustle for startups and also as corporate for the investment process, which I think a lot of startups can tolerate if they get there. So please tell us how other startups can approach investors and how can they find them, let's say. Um, so today, to be honest, um, LinkedIn is the best platform to really find the investors. Um, but now us as Korak, we are actually, I'm not going to go into details because things are not done, but we uh, are partnering up with several other companies to create uh, a fund for startups, uh, especially early stage startups. Uh, and uh, other startups that can come, really it's not, there is no such rule that says only a tech startup can come for investment. Um, Definitely not a written rule, definitely not an unwritten rule where it's just how it is, but uh, tech startups, now to, be, to have a reality check here, tech startups are more likely to be fun funded because of that ease of scalability. Uh, you know, we humans are, uh, you know, very adapted to wanting immediate results or very quick results. And the beauty of tech startups is the, those quick results that we get. Uh, other companies will take more time, but um, I'll go back to my earlier point, the most important thing is scalability. So even if it's a non-tech startup and uh, you are able to show me that this startup is gonna become big um, and you have the potential of becoming a global player, then yes, uh, please do approach. Okay, so... Uh the, your plan is to have funds for other startups. Will this be uh, like other startups can approach you for investment or is it that you select them based on your research? Um, to be honest, they're both. Uh, because, you know, research, you can do research, but then there's some people with brilliant ideas and no funding. So mm -hmm. they don't really have anything out there that I can go find with the research. Uh, so we are doing our research, we're looking for opportunities, but the please, by all means, if there is startups out there, do come to us. Uh, you can find me after this, uh, when I get down from the stage, or LinkedIn, or however. Um, but we're also planning for something else. We are going to create in our office, actually, very soon, in a couple of months' time, we're going to name it Startup Corner, uh, where we will be hosting startups for a period of three months. Uh, first, to lower the cost of uh, office space and all of that on them. Uh, second, it's for our team, for our experts being corporate structure, to give them that corporate governance uh, knowledge that they will later need for investment and for funds. Um, and it's not uh, necessary, necessarily that we're going to invest in these, but uh, we might even invest in them if we see potential for us and with our uh, vision. From what I understood is that corporate, uh, Korak as a corporate is now exploring other investment fields and it's exploring uh, startups. 
uh, this should become the norm, but uh, I have to get back to what Corec is now doing and what is the future of your telecom services in the face of the new trends in tech industry. For example, cryptocurrency, uh, in internet, uh, satellite internet, and other hot trends that are becoming uh, dominant in the market. Um, so, to be honest, uh, in telecom in the traditional way, um, maybe in our country it will live for another 10, maybe even 15 years, but that's the maximum. Uh, today we're seeing huge companies, companies that I personally cannot come and show my muscles and say I will compete with them. Uh, I'm call talking about companies such as Meta, Facebook formerly, uh, companies such as SpaceX, companies uh, such as Google. Now we're seeing pilot projects from these companies, whether it's via satellite or whether it's uh, citywide uh, fiber connectivity, that they are giving free of charge, high speed internet. Um, and, you know, up to a point, it was necessary to have my SIM card for you to register on WhatsApp and Viber. But today, Facebook doesn't even require that. Mm -hmm. You have Facebook and with Messenger, you can make a video call, you can make a voice call. So, I'm simply not able to compete uh, with these. So, for us as Korak, it is really important, this diversification. Mm -hmm. uh, for us to become content providers for entertainment, for giving people uh, content to consume. For us in going into uh, startups that will live beyond just the traditional uh, connectivity that we're providing. Now, why it's more important for us and actually more profitable for us is because of the data that we have uh, on our customers, where they are, how much they spend. Uh, so we are able to take those decisions better. And the, the title of this panel, The Power of Numbers, uh, it is the data that is there. And um, for us, it's also really important is because we are giving, we are the enablers of, of this. You know, T today, a company such as uh, TipTop, um, without the enablement of data, whether by Korak or even competitors of TipTop that might be getting from competitors of Korak, it, it will not be possible. Uh, but tomorrow, a company such as TipTop will not need me for connectivity when Facebook is providing them uh, free data from uh, the satellite. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to be very careful as to what we're doing and how we're going. We have to go, again, uh, we have to see where the world's headed. And now this is where the power of data comes. This is the trend that we're really riding on. And uh, it's, it's definitely important diversifying what we have. But again, it's not necessarily just tech because there's other things that tech might enable that are not really tech, but might be enabled by tech. Um, and uh, if I'm allowed, I just want to kind of talk about government a bit more here. I think it, can I say a word? Can I say it's absolutely stupid that they are turning off the internet every morning for three to four hours just because of the testing? Uh, because this is what we're really saying is that the education system is failing. It's really important, so, you know, and, and the reason I said this is because we had a joke yesterday. We were discussing whether we can do something where we can segregate all tip-top drivers and make sure they stay connected. And we were so serious about it because it was the heat of the moment. Then I said, wait, 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 let's take a second. Actually, nobody has internet to order, so what will they do? How will they deliver? To whom, to, to whom they will deliver? So connectivity is really important, and in today's world, without internet connectivity. And now, as we go into the internet of things, um, without connectivity, life will almost be impossible. And I don't think the new generation would even know how to survive. That's understandable. Thank you, Kagmazen, for your uh, points. Uh, I personally enjoyed uh, the talk with you. And now I think I should give the uh, chance to the audience to ask any questions if they have, or if they have any comments, please. Any questions from the audience? So, I, I think there's no... Uh, uh, that might be your talk was so no, descriptive. No, I think that. You, you asked the right questions. You've asked all of their questions. So. Uh, I mm -hmm. apologize for that. And I hope we covered all the points uh, here. Uh, thank you so much again, Kagmazen, and uh, I think we are done here.